To answer the question about whether or not there is an ANAF-like protein in humans, we can take the selected sequence that we chose above, which is from the DNA binding domain of the bacterial protein, and we can blast that against the human genome sequences at the blast site. Since we're looking at protein sequence, we'll go ahead and use the BLAST P configuration of the Human Genome BLAST, which can be selected for on the BLAST homepage. Once we do that, we can paste the sequence of interest, the amino acid sequence, into the query box, select the RefSeq protein database, which will be the complete set of RefSeq or reference proteins in the human genome, and we would pick the program BLAST-P, which is specific for protein. The reason we would select protein and choose proteins over, say, nucleic acid sequence is due to the redundancy in the nucleic acid sequence. We'd have to go through three complete reading frames with each BLAST search, and the wobble in the codons would also add a degree of uncertainty and make the BLAST results more difficult to interpret. So we'll select these criteria and use the protein sequence and hit BLAST. This will go ahead and set up the preliminary um, sequence search in Q, and then we can select View Report. As you know, the View Report will take a few seconds, up to several minutes in some cases, depending on traffic. We get a result back. We, of course, saw the cartoon section of the results, and we can specifically see that there are two direct hits. We can select the uh, link to the gene page. That's the blue box with the G in it. Click on that, and that will take us to the Entree Gene Summary page for the top match. And we can see that it's von Hippel-Landau syndrome gene. VHL is the symbol and we can look at all the information about what that gene is and what it does. The gene number, which is highlighted next, and all genes in the human genome have a gene ID number associated with them at this point. There's also the official names, the official symbols, and so forth, all spelled out at the very top of the gene summary page in VHL is the symbol for the gene that matches our bacterial gene, or at least the DNA binding portion of that gene. And we picked that, of course, because that was most likely to be the most highly conserved part of the gene through evolution. There's also a summary of what the gene does, and we can see immediately that it's involved in regulating oxygen response and genes that are involved in uh, oxygen response very similar to the function it had in the bacterium where it respond uh, it was a DNA binding protein that regulated the response to nitrogen in other words another gas sensor and also another DNA binding transcription factor uh, just like the sigma factor we found earlier in the bacterial genome we can go to the map viewer and see exactly what chromosome the gene is on we can see the cartoon ideogram of where the gene is on the left side of the map. We can see on the far right side of the map the entire exon intron structure of the gene and by clicking on the symbol of the gene on the map viewer we go right back to the Entree Gene Summary page. As we scroll down we encounter more information. In particular we can see the gene riffs or the uh, list of PubMed papers with valuable information about the gene and the basic information about why we believe certain things about that gene. You can click on any one of these papers and it will take you directly to the PubMed entry for that paper with the abstract and summary for the paper and since this particular paper is in PubMed Central access to the paper is for free. For access to other types of papers that are not free uh, you need to look at the PubMed tutorial that's built into NCBI, and I can explain the details of using, using the proxy server system 
for the Health Sciences Library to get to restricted resources later in the class live because that takes a little bit extra explanation. As you can see, we can access the full paper online, including figures and so forth, explaining, for instance, a particular aspect of the VHL gene product and how it functions. You can also download, in general, from most publishers, the full paper in PDF format. Go back to the Entree Gene page. We can see that there is a link to the uh, Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomes, which is another NCBI-like resource. All of these resources are linked together over the internet. One of the advantages of the KEG site is that it lists graphical descriptions of the biochemical pathways and processes associated with a particular gene. In this case, it shows that the VHL gene product is associated with a transcription initiation complex as detailed by the cartoon in this display. In some cases where there's an actual circuit diagram in the keg pathways as we've talked about before, that will be displayed. In this case, we're just looking at what the um, transcription initiation complex would look like and VHL's role in it. And as you can see from that diagram, it is a DNA binding portion of a complex involved in activating promoters. As we scroll down, we can see some other data such as what factors the protein product of VHL interacts with. We can see what's called um, the ontologies. In addition, you can also see that there's redundancy built into the Entree Gene page. We can get to the KEG uh, pathways again through the text in the page as well as in the menu on the right of the page. The ontologies, as I said before, tell us what the protein does and it shows us of course it's a DNA binding transcription factor uh, involved in elongation and initiation and things of that sort it is nuclear bound as well. As we scroll down further we see the RefSeq link and we click on that that takes us to the protein summary page for the reference or baseline sequence that we would use to compare to all other sequences of this particular gene product uh, the amino acid sequences of this particular gene product and as you can see that sequence is down at the bottom of the peptide summary page. If we were to go uh, up to the top of the page again, and you'll see that in just a moment, what we can do is change the format that the sequence is in by going to the display drop down, selecting the fast A format. Once we do that, the gene is displayed in the familiar FASTA format that can be used by other bioinformatics programs to analyze the amino acid or if it were a gene, the gene sequence, if we were looking at the gene summary page. We can send that particular FASTA sequence to a standard text file on the send to draw down, uh, drop down menu and from there we can just simply cut and paste that sequence directly into a notepad file or directly into the program of interest, some other program.